Now, 430,000 miles an hour, how does anyone invent some sort of craft that can travel at that speed? Well, the first thing, well, good morning um, and, and Merry Christmas to everybody there. Um, the first thing is, of course, everything's relative in space. So the Earth itself is swinging around the, the sun at 30 kilometers per second. Um, so, you know, 100,000 kilometers an hour. Um, and what the Parker Solar Probe is going quite a lot faster than that. The way that it's done that is use uh, the planet Venus. Um, so it flies past Venus repeatedly and it uses the gravity of Venus then to change its orbit, which allows it to fall closer to the sun. The sun has enormous gravity and that gravity pulls it in and accelerates it and makes it go faster and faster. Now, in general, there's not much you can hit out there. There's, you know, it's just empty space. So it's not like flying through the Earth's atmosphere at super high speed where you've got molecules and, and so on hitting it and make, uh, making it very hot until it gets close to the sun where it is right now. Um, in fact, in the next half, uh, 10 or 15 minutes or so, it'll be its closest approach. And then it's facing the enormous heat of the sun. It's going to be, the, the probe gets up to about 1400 degrees Celsius. Um, but there's also lots of particles coming away from the sun in the solar wind. So it's a very clever little spacecraft, which has survived many of these encounters before. This one's just a little bit closer than all of the previous ones. Is there a gravitational pull from the sun? It absolutely is what holds us in orbit going around the sun. All the planets are held by the gravity of the sun. Um, and Parker Solar Probe is using that in order to accelerate closer and closer to the sun. Um, uh, we also have a spacecraft, the European Space Agency has a spacecraft called Solar Orbiter, which has been doing the same thing, um, using Venus to get closer and closer to the sun. It doesn't go as close in, but what it has, which is different, is it has cameras on board which can look at the sun. Parker Solar Probe doesn't have cameras which can look directly at the sun. I mean, imagine it's only um, six million kilometers away, which is 4% of the distance that we are. So if they opened their eyes and looked with cameras, they would be burned up immediately on board, the, the robots on board, so to speak. So what's the point of this? What, what are we going to learn from it? Well, one of the big mysteries about the sun, if you think about the sun itself, is the surface of the sun is about 6,000 degrees, uh, 5,500, 6,000 degrees. But the atmosphere of the sun, what we call the corona, uh, which is too faint for us to see if you look up, you should never look at directly at the sun, but if you look out in the sky, you can't see the corona. It's drowned out by the sun itself. But during a solar eclipse, we can see this wispy atmosphere that's at millions of degrees. And one of the big problems we don't understand is how you get from 6,000 degrees on the surface to millions further out. Um, and Parker Solar Probe, by flying very close into the sun, will help us understand that. Now, that might be, seem to many people, kind of abstract, but that is the origin then of the solar wind, which sweeps out from the sun all the way out to Earth. And that solar wind can cause a thing called space weather. Uh, that's where the magnetic field and the particles from the sun hit our atmosphere. It can create the northern lights, the southern lights, which are very beautiful, but it can also actually create real big problems for our technology. It can knock out communication satellites. It can knock out power grids on Earth. So understanding how the sun and its changing activity is linked to the Earth is kind of the basis of the, the, the science that's going on with this mission. And how much does this mission cost? That's a great question, actually. It's one of the things I didn't look up this morning. Uh, that's a, well, it's a NASA mission, so I don't have that. I used to work for the European Space Agency. Typically, these missions are a few hundred million, which sounds like a lot. But if you think about the technology we have on Earth, all of the communication systems, all of our GPS systems, they all depend on understanding the sun better. Uh, there was an event in 1859, um, which sounds like a long time ago, but it's very recent in, in the history of the sun and the earth, which, which it was called the Carrington event. A huge solar flare came out from the sun, hit earth, and it set telegraph machines. There were no mobile phones then, but it set telegraph machines on fire, the amount of energy that was deposited. Um, and one of the nice things, actually, what they're hoping for today in this flyby is, is this, the sun is at its peak activity. Every 11 years, it gets to a peak. It's called the solar maximum. And they're hoping they will fly through a flare today if, if there's a chance that one goes off. Um, and, but these events are really potentially very dangerous for us on Earth and understanding, and, and not to the human health, but to our technology. And if a Carrington-like event hit us on Earth today, it would probably knock out power grids across most of the world. So understanding that is, you mm. would say, worth a lot more money perhaps than the probe cost. 